I'm Tim Queso, and I'm building my bankroll to $100,000 so I can quit my job as a roofer and play poker full time. Welcome back to episode seven of Playing Poker until I can quit my job. Currently, the bankroll sits at $12,968, so we're on a bit of an upswing after that massive win on Poker Night America. In the previous vlog, if you haven't watched it, go check it out. However, in this vlog, we are playing on TCH Live in Dallas, Texas. It's a big game, big stakes with a massive swing. Not gonna spoil it for you guys, so let's get into the hands, let's go. All right, we hop into this 510 game for the max, which is $2,000. However, it is matched to stack and also the $25 shadows on the entire game. So we're playing way out of our comfort zones. But nonetheless, here we go. In the first hand, we look down at pocket fours in the small blind. It folds to me, and I decide to limp for 25 bucks. Scott limps in the big blind, and then a guy you guys might know, Slick Rick, decides to raise to 150 bucks in the straddle. Should probably just fold, but I think it'd be pretty cool to stack Slick Rick, my first hand of the stream. So... I call and Scott folds, heads up to a flop against the toughest player at the table, our very first hand. It comes eight, three, seven, two clubs. Not a bad flop for pocket fours, actually, and this board should heavily favor me. So I think a check raise might be the move here. I check, Rick continues for 150 bucks, and I decide to call again. I think a check raise is the move, but clearly I didn't check raise. So I just call, we're off to a turn. It's the deuce of clubs which is probably the only other card besides a four I was hoping to see. So now I think a check raise is definitely the move. I check, but Slick Rig is just too good. He checks it back. We're off to a river. It's the five of clubs. So we make ourselves a flush, but it is the worst flush. And I decide let's put out a blocker bet of 225 bucks. Pretty bad sizing. I should either be going really, really small or I should be going really, really big. Not even sure what I'm trying to accomplish with this bet. I guess I just didn't want to face a really big bet and have to decide whether or not I thought he was bluffing or not. I don't know. Maybe I was trying to make this look like value. Who knows? But I bet 225 Rick calls with his 10 high flush and takes it down. Nice hand, brother. In the second hand of the session, we look down at pocket tens, not jack 10 10 like the graphics show. We do not have three cards. We have two, and they are two tens. We're in the small blind, and the hijack raises to 35 bucks. The cutoff calls and action is on me. Pretty straightforward three bet here, but being out of position, I think we have to go big. So I make it 185 bucks, and only Zach calls. In the hijack, we're heads up to a flop. Comes decent. Comes three ten deuce. So we flopped the nuts on a super wet board. You love to see it. I continue for a hundred bucks and Zach says, you know what? That's not enough, brother. I'd like to donate some more chips. He makes it 350 bucks. I'm sitting 1.4K effective after my hundred dollar bet. So I wouldn't mind a jam here, but I don't want him to fold those straight and flush draws that we're way ahead of. So I decide to stick in the call. We're off to a turn. It's the Jack of Hearts. I check hoping Zach will bet and he does not disappoint. He ships it all in, and I literally snap call before the camera angle can even change. We flip over the pocket tens, and he shows four or five of clubs. So he flopped himself an open ender with a flush draw. So obviously, he has plenty of equity. The pot is 4500 bucks, and we're running it twice. The first river comes the four of hearts. Second river comes the king of hearts. So we hold, and we scoop the biggest pot of our lives, I think. Not 100% sure on that. Um, I have played a pot pretty close to that amount, I think, in the past, but this is definitely the biggest pot I've ever got on film, and it comes at a great time. Let's go. All right, in this next hand, there is an open to $75 from the plus two. The hijack, cutoff, and small blind all call the $75, and then we look down at two black aces. In the big blind, the nick game is also on for 50 bucks a person, so if you lose, you owe 400 bucks. There's plenty of action before me. We're out of position. I think we got to go huge. Make it look like we're just trying to make a move and get rid of that knit button. So I decided to go massive for $500 and everybody folds. So absolutely crazy hand. I thought I was definitely going to get called light or maybe somebody would jam and I would snap it off with aces and uh, we would double up and pretty much do a little hit and run. But that's not what happens. We still take down $340 uncontested and we lose our knit button. I'll take it. 
And this next thing we look down at Queen Jack offsuit in the cutoff. It folds all the way over to me and I open to 75 bucks. Folds back over to Slick Rick and the small blind who decides to three bet to $300. Amy cold calls from under the gun and I'm not going to be a nit. I call in position even though I wanted to fold. Kind of nitty, just being honest. Anyways, three ways to a flop. Flop comes really good. It comes four, queen, queen, two, clubs. So the deck apparently loves us today because we are not missing a single flop. And it gets better when Slick Rick checks and Amy decides to bet $300. I just call and Rick folds. We are heads up to a turn is the nine of spades. And Amy does not slow down. She bets again for $500. And honestly, I'm starting to think we might have some kicker problems. So I'm kind of sweating here, but... I'm not folding. I stick in the call. Once again, we are off to a river. It is the ace of hearts. And now Amy checks. Whew. Okay. Thought she might jam and that would have been sick. I would have probably called though. Anyways, the pot is $2,600 and I think jamming is probably the best play here. I'm not sure what other sizing makes sense. If we make it like $1,200, I just don't know what worse hands can call. So hopefully it'll look like we miss a flush draw or we can get called by a worse queen. So I decide to stick it all in for $3.1 thousand dollars and aiming pretty quickly folds her pocket 10. So we are taking down this $2,600 pot. All right, we are halfway through the session at this point and we look down at King 10 offsuit in the other gun straddle. Slick Rick opens the 50 bucks from the plus two position. The cutoff and big blind both call in with two Broadway cards. I am going to call as well. So we're four ways to a flop. It comes queen, queen, jack. So we flop ourselves open ended and when it checks to Slick Rick, he continues for 75 bucks. The cutoff calls and so do I. So now we're three ways to a turn. The turn comes a break. It's the seven of clubs. Not what we're looking for. So I check and thank Hopefully action checks through on this turn and the river of course brings the help we want in the form of the ace of spades it's an absolute gem card not only because we make our straight but now we can get paid off by pretty much any ace x holding so i decided to lead out on this river for 225 bucks around half pot so great calls and the cutoff folds we show the straight and as you guys can see so Rick did in fact river himself top pair with an ace so you can't really blame him for calling unfortunately for him we rivered ourselves a straight and we are taking down another nice size pot and this next one we look down at another beautiful hand ace jack of diamonds in the small blind action starts with a raise from zach and the hijack to 75 bucks it folds over to me and with a beautiful hand like this I'm going to be putting in a three bet this time. I three bet to 275 bucks and Zach decides to just call. We're heads up to a flop. Once again, we do not miss. It comes ace, six, eight, rainbow with one diamond out there. So we flop ourselves top pair with the back door nut flush draw. I throw out a small C bet for 175 bucks, but sadly, Zach only has himself king, queen of hearts and decides to not peel with his back door straight and flush draws. We're still taking down another nice size pot. It's not a crazy hand, I know, but I'm just including it because 80% of all the hands we played were pretty much identical to this hand. I would three bet, I would see bet on the flop, I'd take it down, or it would be the other way around. Anyways, nothing too crazy in this hand, but just showing it to show you guys how most of the session was going. All right, we're approaching the end of our session here on TCH Live, and we look down at a beautiful King Queen of Diamonds on the button, and there's a race from the hijack, 75 bucks. It folds over to me, and for some odd reason, I decide to just call why I do not know, uh, so don't ask. Slick Rick decides to come along as well, so we're three ways to a flop. It comes deuce, ace, five, rainbow. Pretty trash flop, uh, but thankfully for us, action checks through on this flop. We're off to a turn. It's the king of spades, so now we turn ourselves a pair of kings, and when action checks to me, I think we have to put in the bed here. Plenty of draws and worse hands we can get called by, so I bet off for 125 bucks, and Slick Rick decides to put in the check raise to $700. The hijack gets out of the way and action is back on me. And honestly, I'm not buying that he has a very strong hand here. I really don't think he has a strong hand here. I think he could have a lot of combo draws, a lot of flush draws or straight draws, a lot of worse hands that we're ahead of. Um, I think he's just trying to make a move on me here because he knows I'm playing out of my comfort zone, which is what he's supposed to do. Um, the issue I'm having is if I call the $700 bet, Rick is a good player, and he is definitely going to put me to the test on the river. I already know he's done it multiple times, other players throughout this session. So I know if I call the 700, uh, I'm more than likely going to face an all-in on the river. And do I really want to risk my entire stack with second pair at the very end of the session? 
I don't think so. I think that's probably one of my flaws in my game is towards the end of the session, I just start to lock it down. And I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. I guess in this case, it's a bad thing because I decided to fold. And as you guys can see, he just had himself a gut shot to a straight. So had we called and had we held on for dear life, we probably would have won ourselves a massive pot, but we didn't. Nice hand, Rick. And that brings us to the last hand of the session. We look down at Queen, 10 of hearts, and hijack. It folds to me, and I raise the 75 bucks. Slick Rick calls, probably planning to bluff me once again on the button. And so does Zach in the plus one. So we're three ways to a flop. It comes nine, Jack, ace, two diamonds, one spade. So pretty good flop for both our range and our hand. So I continue betting when it's checked to me. I decide to bet 85 bucks and only Zach calls. So we're heads up to a turn. It's the nine of clubs, which I kind of hate, but then again... If I had myself a strong ace in this spot, I'd definitely keep betting. So when I just have an open ender, I'm going to have to keep betting as well. This time I decide to size up. I bet 350 bucks. I really like this bet, and I like it even more when Zach decides to fold. So we're taking out another medium-sized pot to end the session. I'll catch you guys in the outro. this vlog if you guys are wondering why i have on the exact same outfit as i did in the intro it's because i'm shooting this the same day as i'm shooting the intro and it's weeks after uh that session that we played on tch live so obviously i'm super happy with how that session went we were in the game for two thousand dollars out of the game for four thousand seven hundred and fifty bucks in the outro it showed that we were out for more but it's only because we bought more in chips so we weren't actually out for that seven thousand amount um we actually won two thousand seven hundred and fifty bucks in about five hours of play so super happy with the results i'm not crazy happy with how I played. I just ran really, really hot. And those stakes were way out of my comfort zone. I was definitely shot taking. So I'm happy with the results, but a lot of work needs to be done. A lot of improvement on my game is needed. We'll for sure shot take in the near future, hopefully on the lodge in the next one. Um, that is one of the goals I have for this year, but we'll have to wait and see. However, you're not gonna wanna miss the next vlog because it's gonna cover the meetup game that we just had yesterday at the fort in Alito, Texas. A one three game crazy action um lots of hands to go over you guys are not going to want to miss it so bankroll also sits at fifteen thousand seven hundred eighteen dollars so we want a bit of an upswing here you guys are not going to miss it probably gonna hit 100k within the next month like comment share subscribe i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks for the support peace